Hey, what's up YouTube? Down the Smartphone Guy coming back at you with another video and tonight I want to introduce you to the Doogee S60. So this is a phone that I'm going to call Beast Mode or the Kitchen Sink Phone because this is a phone that not only is Beast Mode because of the fact that it is a super rugged phone, but also I call it the Kitchen Sink Phone because you know, you've heard the phrase, uh, they throw in everything, even the Kitchen Sink. That's pretty much what Doogee did with the S60. They threw in just about every feature you can want in a phone. So let's go ahead and talk about what all this has to offer. This is my first impressions of the Doogee S60. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about this device. So we have the Doogee S60, and uh, you can see that they call it flagship rugged because it does have a ton of flagship specs and features, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. And it is also a very rugged device. So let's go ahead and take a look at what you get in the box. So that's where the phone would have been if it were still in there. Let's go ahead and pop this thing out. And uh, underneath, you can see that we have a dun 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 micro usb cable that's kind of unfortunate so that's not quite flagship there um, these are a couple of screws we'll talk about what you need those for we get a little bit of a small screwdriver there and you get a fast charge now they say 3.0 here um, but in the specs i did read 2.0 so i'm not really sure which one it is but i would assume going by the charging brick that it is fast charge 3.0 capable because of that's what they're including in the box so that would make sense so let's go ahead and set that off to the side and uh, here is the device itself we'll go ahead and take a look around the device now this actually has a lot compared to a lot of other phones so first thing here is a dedicated camera button um, now that button is only uh, used when you're actually in the camera app it doesn't actually launch you into the camera so that's actually a good thing um, because it's pretty easy to accidentally push we have the power button here and uh, this one here I can if you can see it it says PTT that stands for push to talk because this does feature uh, push to talk option so it actually has a dedicated push to talk button which you know I think that would be good for uh, like construction crews or people like that um, that would maybe use a rugged phone like this um, there is an SOS button as well I actually disabled it because it is very easy to accidentally push that now in order to activate the SOS it actually requires five seconds hold um, but I've actually found myself accidentally holding it without realizing it and uh, I almost activated it one time uh, came down to one second left um, and then you can see we got the volume rocker there as well so all of them are very clicky um, but I will say that um, because they're so clicky and so easy to push um, it's nice that this one only uh, activates the camera or sorry it only works when you're in the camera app and then this one over here you can disable so that's nice because they are very easy to accidentally push now we have NFC built in in the back Underneath this shell here, we have a 5,080 milliamp hour battery, so a massive battery. Right under here, we have our spot for our micro SD card. It supports up to 128 gigs. It has 64 gigs built in, so that's awesome. Plenty of storage there, um, but you can also put in a micro SD. And uh, one thing that's a little bit weird, it is dual SIM, so that's awesome too, but it's weird because it uses micro SIM. So instead of using nano SIM, it actually uses micro SIM. Um, so you have to use an adapter if you have a nano sim card so just something to keep in mind we have a 21 megapixel camera on the back with dual flash there and uh, we'll talk more about that in just a little bit um, and then on the front we have a 8 megapixel camera we have our earpiece there and uh, you can see some of the sensors there um, but obviously this is a very rugged phone so this is one that I have no doubt could take some spills with no problem uh, and definitely withstand them. So it has Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, and you can see there actually is a screen protector already put on there. Um, but it did also include a screen protector, which I forgot to show you in this little package, along with some of the materials. So um, you do get an extra screen protector in addition to the one that's already on there. Um, so lots and lots of uh, stuff built into this phone so uh, this is where you're actually going to find your uh, micro usb slot there um, in order to charge it up and then on the top we have we do actually have a headphone jack which in order to use you're going to have to remove this little flap here and uh, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt but there it is so um and then you can push it right back on. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the display. So this has a 5.2 inch display. We'll go ahead and use the, oh, I uh, accidentally hit the fingerprint sensor a few too many times. All right, so this is the actual device itself. Um, so we'll take a look at some of the software and things like that. I should mention that there are six gigs of RAM on this phone. So that's another one of those things where it just packs in a ton of features. 
uh, at a pretty reasonable price point. Again, links will be down in the description if you're interested in picking this up. So build quality wise, a beast of a phone. So 5.2 inch display, it's 1080p and uh, it gets very, very bright. Um, I would say on the opposite end, it does not get very dark. So that could maybe be a little bit of a negative um, if you want to use it at night, but it does include some night modes. We'll all right, so let's go ahead and jump into the performance of this device. And uh, to do that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the Geekbench 4 score here. So as you can see, we have a single core score of 772 and a multi-core score of 3485. Now, in comparison to some other devices, that kind of falls right in with some of those devices like uh, those with the, uh, if you're familiar with the Snapdragon uh, 820, that's kind of about where this thing falls in. And that is to say that this thing does do a fairly decent job of multitasking, also playing games, not too bad. Um, you will definitely experience some hiccups when it comes to things like social media. So let's see, as I'm scrolling through here now, it's not quite loaded all the way, but you can see that there is definitely a little bit of lag there. Um, so I found that social media was the area that it had the most lag. Now, one other thing I want to mention is the the software that I have on here now is the stock software. It's called the Doogee Home. Um, when I ran Nova Launcher on this, which I'll show you in a little bit, um, it actually ran a little bit smoother. So that's something worth mentioning because I think part of the performance issues that I'm getting happens to um, be in relation to the software that they have on there. So we'll talk about that again in just a little bit. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the cameras. Um, so again, we do have a dedicated camera button up here, which you can hold down actually. Uh, to get the camera app launched, or you can just go ahead and hit the camera. Um, so in terms of the camera, we have again a 21 megapixel camera on the back, eight megapixel camera on the front up here. And uh, when you take shots, it does take them pretty quickly. So um, actually we'll just go ahead and use that dedicated camera app or camera button. And uh, we'll take a picture of my new watch here. So this is the TicWatch S. So it does that pretty quickly. I'm um, not too bad in terms of shutter delay. Um, you can see there's a number of shooting modes down here. We'll take a look at these um, pictures um, that I've done already uh, at the end of the video. So if you're interested in seeing those, um, check out some. But you can see there's a number of shooting modes here that you kind of scroll through, kind of like old school. If you remember some of the older cameras, um, you could actually like scroll through some different shooting modes. Well, that's what you get here. Um, so I've pretty much kept it on auto because um, I found that a lot of these other modes just didn't do as good of a job as I thought they might. So there's a portrait mode technically right here that you can see and it just kind of blurs out the background, kind of uh, a software thing. Um, so that actually is probably the best lighting there. Um, but anyways, um, so that what was that one? That one's called sunset looks like but anyways uh, so you can see there's face beauty here we also have a uh, video course um so in terms of the video we're looking at 1080p on both the front and the back camera um there we go all right so video quality you're looking at full hd is the best quality you can get here um so not too bad um and then the front facing camera same thing again if we go over here to video again, 1080p is the best video quality we're going to get out of this camera as well. Now, I will mention that there is optical image stabilization, which is kind of surprising at a phone at this price point. So um, I haven't had a chance to test that out. So in my full review, we'll go ahead and give that a try. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the battery life on this device. And again, I'll mention here that there is a non-removable 5,080 milliamp hour battery on the Doogee S60, which is a massive battery. And uh, yes, that battery will definitely get you through a full day of usage. Now, the question is, can it get you through two full days? And to that, I would say you're probably going to be a little hard pressed to get through two full days with this battery, um, but no doubt um, in my uh, two days of usage, I've been getting through a full day of usage with roughly around uh, about 40 to 50% battery life left over, and that's with about six, seven hours of screen on time. So that is very, very good. Um, that is to say, you're looking to me, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I haven't been able to burn through the whole battery um, yet. I actually had to charge it up uh, one time already. Um, but you're looking at around nine hours of screen on time, if that kind of gives you an idea. Um, in my first full day of usage, around nine hours is what I was gonna get. Um, but again, I had to stop it um, in order to charge it up. But definitely very good battery life, but probably not a two-day battery, uh, just to kind of keep that in perspective. Now, in terms of software, this is running Android 7.0, so we are definitely not on the newest operating system, but it did actually have an update when I first popped in here. Um, so you can see there is up to the November security patch, so that's not too bad. Um, you know, the newest, uh, a lot of phones are on the December security patch, or at least a few phones are at the moment, um, but November security patch, not too bad. Um, again, Android 
7.0, and I mentioned this already, but this has the Doogee Home, um, and some things worth mentioning that this has. I should probably go back into settings for that, so let's go ahead and jump into that. There actually are quite a few of options you have here in terms of some smart assistants. So we have some call motions that would be like pick up and put it down in order to hang up or answer a phone call. We have an LED notification, so that is just going to um, determine what the LED notifier is going to do. Um, so you can kind of adjust that. We have some non-touch operations. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so that's jumping into the gallery. So you can just wave. And same thing with the music. So you can just kind of wave over the device in order to get those things to work. Um, but we have some system motions here as well. Um, so that's the three-finger screenshot. That's actually one I really like. Um, makes it really easy. Rather than having to do the power power and the volume down. It's actually easier just to swipe down with three fingers. So nice one there. We have some off-screen gestures. So there, I mean, all that is to say, I'm not going to go into every single one here because there's so many, but there are just a plethora of um, different things that you can do in terms of gestures. So they kind of threw in everything with this phone. Like I mentioned, this is kind of a kitchen sink phone in my opinion, because there's just so much included in it. Um, so if you want more on that I might do just a video specifically on all those little features that they have there in the software um, but one thing I will mention is the fact that for me personally um, I found this little guy to be really annoying and if anyone knows how to get rid of this guy um, I just am really annoyed with it but um, this is actually a theme uh, engine here so there's a bunch of themes that you can get in here um, they're all free at least the ones that I, I tried three or four different ones all of them were free um, from what I can tell um, but I have no idea how to get rid of that guy. Every time I get back to the home screen, that guy pops up. And I think I already mentioned this, but if you go over to the left, you have something kind of like a little news feed here. Um, so not something that I personally like. I'm just not a huge fan of that. I don't mind if it's Google now, but um, I'm just not a huge fan of it in this case. Um, so that is to say, I went ahead and uh, when I was using the device, um, I've actually already launched in Nova, and uh, with Nova, I found that it just works a little more smoothly. Now, it ha hasn't actually done all of the Nova settings yet, um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, make Nova the default launcher here. And uh, so now, um, you'll see that, yeah, it, it just runs more smoothly. You get rid of a lot of that bloat when you have it on Nova Launcher. Now, you're going to lose some of those gestures, so that's something worth mentioning. But Nova has a bunch of gestures in and of itself. Um, so if that's something that you want, you can see here, Nova has a bunch of gestures as well. Um, so lots of options there. Um, but I just prefer Nova Launcher over the stock launcher on this device. Um, not that it's a heavy skin, um, but one thing I do want to mention before I get out of that is the fact that the one app that, or there's really two apps that it comes with, and both of them involve this being more of a rugged device, so that's kind of cool. Um, but we have this Zello, which is what you're gonna use for that push to talk. Um, so if you're somebody who's maybe a construction worker and you guys wanna use uh, push to talk in order to talk to each other, or whatever your business might be, um, Zello is the way to go, and then you can use this little push push to talk button which is nice and it's dedicated there and then also with the toolbox you get a bunch of different little tools here um, so protractor, plumb bob, uh, magnifier, alarm, height measure, bubble level, picking, all kinds of things you got going on there. The heart rate is going to use the camera, so you actually have to cover up the camera in order to do that. So you're going to smear up your camera lens, um, but that is kind of cool that it at least includes that. So now let's go ahead and listen to the speaker. So on here you would l look at that and you would think, well, this one has dual uh, speakers, but in fact it doesn't, or at least from what I can tell it does not, because every time I've ever listened to any kind of music with this, I only hear music coming out of this uh, speaker, so I'm not really sure what this one is, if it's a microphone or what that might be, um, but I definitely have not heard anything coming out of it. So let's go ahead and jump down here into Royalty Free Beats, and we'll jump into the same song I always use, and we're going to crank this bad boy up. All right, so I'm just going to set it down here, let it do the whole thing here. Actually, let's skip ahead in the song to... A little more exciting part of it. Here we go. And if I cover up that speaker, you pretty much hear nothing. Where if I cover that one up... So I can only get music come out of that one, so I don't know if this is dual speakers. They kind of indicate that it is, but definitely I'm only hearing volume coming out of here. So I don't know if that's an error with mine or if maybe that's just part of the design. Um, you guys will have to let me know if you have this device, um, what's going on there. But anyways, so... 
that's actually at full volume. So that is one thing I will definitely say. If you need a nice loud speaker, this is definitely not the phone because the speaker is not loud on this phone. So we'll go ahead and turn that off now. Um, but anyways, yeah, so that is one area that I would say would definitely be a weakness is that speaker. Um, not only is it rear firing, but it's also not very loud. Um, it's actually quite quiet. Um, on this device. So other things to mention about the device. So um, I know a lot of people are probably already wondering, and I probably should have started out with this, but this will get LTE um, on any GSM network in the US. So I'll just show you real quick. So I used it with Cricut. So this was actually a speed test with Cricut. Now Cricut caps you at eight megabits per second. And uh, you can see that it was kind of in a heavier usage time. So 3.50 in the afternoon. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was only getting 3.7, um, but that is technically LTE on Cricut. So if you've used Cricut, you know kind of how they cap their speeds. But this is on T-Mobile, which is what I have it on now. Um, so definitely getting just as good a speed as I would get with any other phone. So yeah, this has every, nearly, really it has every band GSM, kind of like the OnePlus 5T or any other devices that are fully unlocked, like um, like what we have here with, uh, this is the, what am I drawing a blank here on the Pixel 2 XL. Also size comparison, you can kind of see that this is roughly the same size as the Pixel 2 XL, um, but definitely a whole lot thicker and a whole lot heavier for sure. Um, so anyways, just a kind of quick look. Um, at that now so yeah that this is definitely a gsm unlocked phone um so again cricket wireless at&t metro pcs uh t-mobile all those phones you're going to do just fine on this because you are going to get the full gamut of gsm networks on this device so with that being said if you have any questions go ahead and leave them down in the comments section this has been the doogee s60 a first look at this device thanks for watching and i will see you all in the next video peace